Good morning, everybody. I hope you're doing well this morning. My gosh, my gosh, what a day it is going to be. <laughs> Good morning, Shadow Grey Wolf 45. Good to see you. Oh, you got your you got your coffee ready. That's that's good. Amy Reisner, that is beautiful. That is beautiful. We love it. We love it. We love it. My dogs rock. Good morning. All on your second cup of coffee. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Hello, Maya. Good to see you. Oh my gosh, it's beautiful. Good morning, Poodle Lady Lady. Yes, yes, yes. Morning, Shizzy, and the rest of y'all. JW, we love you, brother. So awesome. Good morning, all of the great, all of you great people in Shizzy Wisnets as well. My Lord Almighty, why is my phone going crazy this morning? Oh, it's because it's reminded me that I need to turn on my my uh, chat on the Rumble side because hey, that's what we do here. We've got we got multiple platforms. We're we are not only on on the YouTube side. Hey, good morning, T Underwood. We are not only on the YouTube side, but we're also on the, the on the Rumble side. We've got Twitch going. We've got Kick, uh, Rumble Kick. YouTube, yeah, it's it's all there. It's all there. We're just, you know, this is this is a going to be a beautiful morning. It's going to be a beautiful day. We've got we've got cloudy skies. It's raining in Atlanta, and uh, who knows? It'll, it'll probably rain all day. But you know, the the beauty of it is, is I've got I've got you guys to to keep me warm and dry. Good morning. Well, no, you know. She'll, she'll keep me warm, you know, good to see you, boss lady. Oh, what a day. What a day. What, what's been going on with you fine folks? Oh, at least, at least I am not, at least I'm not in Sydney or this airplane passenger right here. So this airplane passenger was fined in Sydney for urinating in a cup. Well, you say, well, why would you? trouble for urinating in a cup well let's see he's on an airplane so he's been fined for urinating in a cup during a delay in deplaning after a landing at sydney airport well i mean is it worth the fine i guess that'd be the question the incident after a three-hour new zealand flight from auckland occurred last december and a sydney court fined the 53 year old man 600 australian dollars or 395 dollars for offensive behavior in february the incident only came to public's attention on Friday, this was last Friday, when New Zealand news, news website stuff reported that a passenger on the same row identified only as Hove, I guess, said she had reported the behavior to the air crew. She said she and her 15-year-old daughter were sitting in, the, sitting in the aisle in middle seats when a man in the window seat, whose name has not been released, was urinating in a cup. Holly said the plane had been in the tarmac for about 20 minutes waiting for a terminal gate to be allocated when she heard the unmistakable sound of a passenger urinating in a cup. She said the man was obviously quite drunk and spilled urine on a flight attendant after he left the plane. Well, you know, when you got to go, you got to go. And, you know, after a three-hour flight, sitting there for, you know, 20 minutes on a tarmac, bladder's getting full. You start doing a little pee pee dance. Next thing you know, yeah, alcohol, it'll do it to you. But the mishap with the attendant wasn't his crime. Australian Federal Police said in a statement that officers removed him from the plane because he had urinated into a cup while in his seat. So, should he have been standing? That's what I'm wondering. So, what if he was standing? Would that have been okay or acceptable? The, the, the Air New Zealand said it does not comment on individual incidents. It said it bans between five and ten customers each month for disruptive behavior, including intoxication. And that's all we know is poor guy got in trouble for peeing in a cup. <laughs> yeah, exactly. When you got to go, man, you gots to go. Just don't do it in, in Sydney. <laughs> good morning, Mary Waltz. Good morning. Hey, good to see you, J.D. Van. Oh man. I mean, alcohol, alcohol will do it. Oh man. I wonder what this is about. I hadn't heard about this. Oh, that's right. I did hear about this. So this is a country music singer.
I, I heard about this. He he threw a threw a chair off of a off of a roof of a six story bar with the cops underneath. That's always a bad idea. So this in Nashville, Tennessee, Morgan Wallen has been arrested after police say he threw a chair off a rooftop of a newly opened six story bar in downtown Nashville. Wallen, who's 30 at the time, <laughs> was booked into jail early Monday on three felony counts of reckless endangerment and one misdemeanor count of disorderly conduct. The charges stem from the chair being thrown from the rooftop of the chief's bar and landing on Broadway near two police officers. An arrest affidavit says the chair landed about three feet from the officers who talked to witnesses and reviewed security footages. Witnesses told officers that they watched Wallen pick up a chair, throw it over the roof, and laugh about it. Well, what else you got to do? I mean, there's no need crying over overthrown chairs. I mean, I'm just saying, why would you why would you cry over thrown chairs? There we go. That looks a little better. Um, but you know, this will get you in trouble in Nashville's. <laughs> yeah, don't be stupid. Don't be stupid. And that's what he did. He went stupid. He went full on stupid. <sighs> the Wallen's attorney, Warren Robinson, confirmed the address late Sunday and said the singer was cooperating fully with authorities. He was released from custody and has a court date scheduled on May the 3rd. Wallen is one of the biggest names in contemporary country. Jeez, see, they, had, they used to have, like, country. You know, there was there was country, and then there was the bad boys, uh, Will and, Will and Willie, the, you know, the boys. They were, they were the outlaws. They they didn't do country music quite the same. They were they were pot smokers and were proud of it and all that neat kind of stuff. So you got the and then of course then they had new country, which you got the you know like Garth Brooks and things like that. So now they call them contemporary country. That's so weird. Ah, uh, hey, good morning, Mary Waltz. I don't know if I said hello yet. Does urine and water in a cup sound different? Um. I guess I've, I mean, maybe she's used to hearing that, you know, maybe that's what her husband does or her boyfriend. Uh, oops. <laughs> Are you feeling better? Are you home again? She is home again and she is feeling better. Oh, good day, Mr. Wisnut. Good day, Fedorowski. Good to see you, man. Good to see you. Uh, alcohol apparently makes you pee in a cup and throw chairs off roofs. Something at least, at least you're not throwing urine off of a roof and peeing in a, in a chair. Because I mean, <laughs> if you, like I said, if you would have been standing, uh, <laughs> maybe 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 this is the universe uh, sign telling me to give up drinking. <laughs> Good luck with that. <clears throat> oh. Wallen is one of the biggest names in contemporary country. His third studio album, don't care what, what how wonderful he did, you know. In 21, the country singer was suspended indefinitely from his label and saw his music pulled by radio stations and streaming services after a video services surfaced of him shouting a racial slur. As a result, he was disqualified or limited from several award shows and received no Grammy nominations for his best-selling Dangerous, the double album. In 2020, he was arrested on public intoxication, disorderly conduct charges after being kicked out of Kid Rock's bar in downtown Nashville. Well, you know, this guy just seems like, at the time, Wallen posted on, I mean, it seems to me this guy just needs to stay away from alcohol. And he's clearly got got problems, you know. He, he's, he should have become a rock star and not a country music singer. Because see, in, in rock music, this is this kind of crap is more tolerated. He can be all racism and and uh, you know throw chairs off of roofs and get kicked out of bars and crap like that. And it's just sort of you know, oh well, another day in rock and roll, you know, or maybe that was the eighties. Damn, I get my years confused. <laughs> At the time, Wallen posted on social media that he and some friends were horse playing after a few bar stops. Ah, oh, shucks, my, we didn't meet no harms and. We just wanted to say sorry to any bar staff or anyone who was affected. Wallen posted on his ex, well, thank you to the local authorities for being so professional and doing their job, jobs of class. Uh, I, I love y'all. Up until the point where my ass is going to jail. <laughs> That's like, 
<laughs> yeah, spent a little, spent a few nights in jail. Not necessarily the drunk tank, but geez, you start getting felonies, and then you're just running into problems. Ah, oh, gosh, these silly people. Why? Why? Oh, why? And this just I don't I don't get it. Why you gotta be why you gotta be stupid? Well it it happens. Stupid is is what stupid does. Oh speaking of stupid. Oh no, I'm not I'm not showing that. That's crazy. April seventh. Oh, that's right. So yesterday I actually it was the day before yesterday. I think it was on the on the seventh. Yeah. April the seventh. I, I saw that I saw this on April the seventh. Um and I added it to my news feed because, you know, I thought this was, was pretty interesting. In April 7th, in history, April 7th, Civil War erupts in Rwanda. On April 7th, 1994, uh, Civil War erupted in Rwanda. A day after a mysterious plane crash claimed the lives of the presidents of Rwanda and Burundi. Bur- I'm not even going to try to pronounce those names. I know Rwanda, but the other one I don't know. In the months that followed, hundreds of thousands of minority Tutsi and Houthi moderates were slaughtered by, well, extremists. It was the Houthis that were extreme in this case. Of course, also on this date, in 1862, Union forces led by Ulysses S. Grant and Carlos de Buell, or Buell defeated the Confederates at the Battle of Shiloh in Tennessee. In 1950, jazz singer Billie Holiday, known as Lady, oh, also known as Lady Day, that's right, was born in Philadelphia. Billie Holiday, damn. There was there was a lot of stuff that happened on the seventh, March the seventh. Wow, Who did May, March, April, April. Jesus, it's already April. This month has gone by insanely fast. How do you get kicked out? Of, how do you get kicked out and kick a rough bar? Act like an ass. I mean. Here's here's the here's the part people don't understand about about musicians and business owners and musicians turned to business owners and you know crap like that because they don't they don't actually run the business they just fund it you know and they'll they'll probably put put some rules in place where it's just like listen you know we're not going to tolerate this kind of stuff if we, if we let if we let old uh, Jim Bob here do it then we've got to let you know Fred over here do it next thing you know we've just got we just we just have horrible horrible things happen to to people and you got you got to keep it yeah, I love Billy Holiday you know what was so interesting about Billy Holiday is she had uh she was um it was it was her voice that 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 was um it was a a cross between masculine and feminine that sort of uh set her apart from from made made her voice unique weird <laughs> it's, a lot of people couldn't tell whether she was male or female whenever she would sing uh they did her gerbs. <laughs> Airline P man needs to wear a nappy on his next trucking flight. Yes, he does. Just, just, just. I, I always forget that that's what they call it in England. They call it a nappy. Man, that's awesome. Most definitely needs to though. Uh, remember when knocking the stage light out at the Opry was a scandal? Yeah, yeah. See, there's. There's so many different things that we could be doing with our with our wonderful life, but you know, instead we read these these kinds of stories. Oh, there was one thing I wanted to read, but I just can't do it. I can't bring myself to it because why it was going on with the AP this I think I know what's going on. That's why. I was like, I was gonna pull up something, but it was uh oh man. This is weird. Uh Uh-oh. Uh-oh. I'm going to have to check something out. All right. Because these these become very, very weird. So let me find this here. As Swiss women score a landmark climate win in a court decision that could ripple across Europe, 
this ought to be hilarious. I love it. Climate justice. Look, there's one, two, three, four, five women, and they're having, well, there's six. There's probably a couple back here. You can't really see them because they are struggling to get those soy arms up above the uh, above the thing. But in Stra- Strasbourg, France, women's Europe's highest human rights court ruled Tuesday that its member nations have an uh, obligation to protect their citizens from ill effects of climate change. Really? <laughs> wow. H- human rights court. Wow. Huh. That's a very curious court. (laughs) Oh. You love Billy Holiday. Oh, hey. I did not see that, Maya. You have an appointment. We will see you soon. You you be safe. And, uh, you know, I hope your appointment goes very well. And have a have a beautiful, beautiful morning. You know, I should have gotten much more coffee than I did. Oh yeah. Ah uh, yes, 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 yes. Remember when knocking said okay. And <clears throat> it still threw out the high profile case brought by six Portuguese youngsters aimed at forcing countries to reduce greenhouse gas emissions. You can't force countries to do things. <laughs> That's <laughs> ah jeez. European High Court of Human Rights with more than two thousand Swiss members of senior women for climate protection. Wonderful. Who also sought such measures in mixed sessions of judgments in which French mayor similarly seeking stronger government aff- efforts to combat climate change was also defeated. Lawyers for all three had hoped the Strasbourg court would find the national governments have a legal duty to make, glo- make sure global warming is held to 1.5 degrees Celsius above pre-industrial levels in line with the goals of the Paris Climate Agreement. Well, here's an idea. What are they going to say whenever it drops like two or three degrees? What are they going to do? I really hope that we would win against all countries. So obviously I'm disappointed that this didn't happen, said 19-year-old Sofia Oliveira, one of the Portuguese plaintiffs. But the most important thing is that the court has said in the Swiss women's case that governments must cut their emissions more to protect human rights. So their win is a win for us. These are the same assholes that go and paint on. They use spray cans, aerosol cans to spray paint on buildings and paintings and crap like that. It sounds like the same group. <laughs> uh, youngsters, wait, go back to the pig. They, they didn't look like youngsters. Well, these are different youngsters. No, these these right here. These uh, people demonstrate out. These are just some of the demonstrators, and they got, they got, they got these people here. Uh, yeah, here's here's your youngsters. That's one of them. She got arrested. <sighs> never, never go full Greta. Uh, look, I have my social media. I have my little stickers and tags. Uh, these are people that fly on planes to get to where they want to go and protest. Yeah, these these are your, your, your youngsters or something like that. They just look like weak, noodly, not serious people. They look, they look scary. You know, they, it's, it's, it's things like this that people see and they go, oh my gosh, the world is coming to an end. It's falling. Oh, oh yeah, climate justice. The, the, these are these are the same people that that wear these like really expensive clothes. They have clothes made by slaves in other countries. Gotta love them. I mean, you know, it's 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 obvious to point out that that those shoes right there, all you know, just look at all the all that rubber and and oh geez, look, they got they got all this plastic and all this all this dye. They got their hair nicely quaffed. And, you know, they they just are sort of like complete, you know, 
goofballs. You know, they, they have, they have weak, spindly little arms and big feet and you're just, you know, like really super crazy people. They can't help it. Is he dumb? There we go. So we got them with their nice little sons and so happy to be there. Yeah. These are these are foolish people. You know, these nice pretty shoes that they wear that oh, where did that rubber come from? Oh, it isn't rubber anymore. We we're using th- synthesized stuff. All of the nice little nail polish that they got on their fingers, you know, they got their hair nicely quaffed and oh they're they're all so special. They're they're saving the climate. Yeah, they're not saving anything. And they know it. They know that they're not saving anything. Yeah, all the little all these little things for them. Oh, yes, got a little bit of makeup on. Oh, but it's just light makeup. It's just light makeup. Oh, no jobs, but of course, they get paid a lot of money. See, see, it's 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 hard for 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 me to understand how you know these 10, 15 people showed up with with these little with these little signs right here that were all printed out. Did did they use did they use uh you know recyclable plastic or no no these these came from a print shop and you know the 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 lettering is like the same same lettering that you get from that uh, you know 2000 years later it's it's all spongebob square pants look i mean seriously that's all spongebob square pants <laughs> just same artist i guess to our leaders, times times up for our governments. Climate action now, yeah. And they're 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 not they're not the they're, they're a little soy. I mean, what can you say? What can you say? But oh, good job, hooray! You've gone full Greta, full Greta. Ah. Oh. So, in reference to its fundamental convention of human rights, the court found that Article 8 of the convention encompasses a right for individuals to ineffective production. Oh, I'm sorry. Effective production by the state authorities from serious adverse effects of climate change on their lives, health, and well-being and quality of life. Or you just punch them in the mouth and tell them to sit down and act like human beings. Judgments from the European Court on Human Rights set a legal precedent against which future lawsuits could be judged in the Council of Europe's 46 member states. Mm. Uh, you know, one of the quick ways to get rid of greenhouse gases is you can you can just ship those fine little fine little folks off to a, a nice little moon, preferably on the on the dark side. But don't worry, every every 21 years or so you'll be able to wave to them. Hail Matty. Congratulations, Judge Matty. Good to see you. Fine, sir. Good to see you. Hey, hey, having some time off the web, but missed you. So I had to drop in to say hi. Megan. Megan is wonderful to see. I'm glad you took some time off the web because it is always, always wonderful to see you. Oh my gosh. Hail Volstorm. The little of the pirates. <laughs> Good to see you. <laughs> expert brother, what's up? Hail expert. We're not worthy. We're not worthy. <laughs> the gringy hobo intellectual look ain't cheap. I know. It is so true. It is it is not cheap. It is it is hard. To get, you know, get your head wrapped around being, you know, <sighs> what did I say? Ineffective? Uh, yeah, it was, uh, I wanted to say effective protection. See, there, here's the problem with activists. They, they always, they always take this, this, uh, this side. I, a friend of mine and I, we were in uh, Chicago for a friend's wedding. Um, and he'd never, he'd never been to the Sears Tower. And I was just like, well, let's, let's go check it out. And uh, so, you, you know, we just we just walked over there because we were just having a good time just wandering around Chicago. 
And uh, this was this was back what twenty years ago? Yeah, it was about twenty years ago. Um, so or less, something like because let's see, they got married. They got married right after. So the friends of mine, they got they got married right after. Um, uh, my wife and I got married like within the same year. Um, I think that ours was in ours was in no, it was the it, it was the following year because ours was in in uh, September and theirs was in in March. So it was like with it like within a year different year but about the same time so we were, we were wandering around this this little this little soy boy comes running up and he he's there with all his little friends and they're protesting and it's just like would you sign this petition because there's not enough green space and i was just like dude get out of my face with that shit but, but, but we're trying to say i was like really you need to get out of my face with that well you're not doing anything to help the planet. i was like man take your ass out of my face get out of the city go just like 10 miles any direction and you're going to have all the cornfields that you can possibly handle like please get out of my face <laughs> just go if you want green go i was like just you you don't get it you live in this city and you're in this little bubble just go away my, my friend my friend that was with me was like dude you need to be so rude i'm like no because this asshole just follow me around all day get me to sign some petition that i don't give two shits about <sighs> <laughs> I'm so bad. Oh my gosh. Oh, well, there we go. Talking trash and truths. Yeah, T3. Good to see you, man. Uh, what do we got? What do we got? Stubble is stubble is hot, Maddie, but it hurts. Well, it depends on where you're putting that stubble. Oh, uh, I saw Greta got arrested in London for blocking the road. It did your heart good. Well, you got a lot of soy boys all like worked up over it too. Cause you know, she's, she's got breast stitches now. She ain't that little, what, 16 year old that was going, how dare you? <laughs> Stacy, good morning. Good to see you. Oh yeah. Make sure you guys are checking out the expert. Oh my gosh. We had so much fun last night. Uh, with, with the, well, for me, it was last night. It was in the evening. Um, but, but, expert was doing it doing a stream yesterday it was so much fun uh yes good morning good morning girl uh talk to you talk to you in about a week or so hey you take care of yourself love and uh be safe be safe uh yes oh yeah see ha good to see you see ha Good morning. Good morning from all. Morning all from Canada. Oh, Canada. <laughs> the expert shiz. Well, is the shiz. <laughs> you guys are awesome. Be sure to hit that like and subscribe to, to shizzy. Oh, my gosh. Too true, Maddie. Sometimes it's worth it. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. It's a turning point. An expert climate change litigation at the University of Zurich said Tuesday's decision confirms that the first time that countries have an obligation to protect people from the effects of climate change. Yes, you know how the quickest way to protect somebody? Just lock them away. Lock them up. Lock them up. Lock them up. Ahead of the ruling, a large crowd gathered in front of the court building to cheer and wave, wave their little flags. Yeah, look at all this. They, they should be using shoestrings. Wow. These things are just wonderful little art deco things of plastic that they've printed out and fold out, um, including the uh, Greta Thunberg, who is coming off of multiple arrests during a demonstration in the, in the, in, I don't want to say it's Hague, but it could be hog over. <laughs> she was demonstrating the hog. Don't demonstrate the hog, Greta. Yeah. Little piglet. <laughs> don't demonstrate the hog. <laughs> green living space was a major part of them ah uh, yes we know about the yahtzees ah uh, they some of those countries overseas are a bit different land is is all towns and cities if you own a quarter of an acre you're a multimillionaire. yes that is very true <clears throat> but lock them away even more <laughs> take away even more of their rights the decisions have the potential to be the watershed moment in the global fight for a livable future. A victory for any of these three cases would be one of the most significant developments on climate change since the signing of the Paris Agreement, said Jerry Liston, 
a lawyer with the Global Legal Action Network, is supporting the Portuguese students. I wonder, I wonder let's find out about this Global Legal Action Network because I don't, I don't, I never heard of them, but I am sure that there is some DEI kind of stuff in there. Let's just just do a little little search for it. Oh yeah, it is. <laughs> oh my gosh, this is awesome. Oh, oh my gosh, it's it's the Glan Glan Network. They call themselves Glan. <clears throat> oh my. Oh, this is this is too funny. I love watching these little little green groups here. Because would you guess? I mean, would you guess that this is this is how they how they feel? <laughs> oh my gosh, I gotta share this. This this is the Glen Network. Our mission: we work with affected affected communities to pursue innovative legal actions across borders to challenge powerful actors involved in human rights violations and systematic injustice. Tomorrow, April 9th, 2024, the European Court of Human Rights will give a ruling in our unprecedented Youth for Climate Change justice case, as well as in Switzerland and Carrying live in the court in Strasbourg. Yeah, it's the same little group of people that were standing out there. It worries me that they have a little child in with their group. Just saying, that looks a little creepish. Ah, uh, but here's here's their group upcoming meditation with Irish purchasers of coal mine in infamous Colombian mine. Glad in the World Eager e- Congress are appealing the UK decision that allows forced labor cotton to be sold for market price. Well, how about free the Uyghurs instead of like taking away all all of their money? <laughs> Uses law to tackle global and across border issues, combines investigation with legal action, independent, not for profit organization, promotes and enforces human rights standards. Da da da. They're fighting a good fight. I love it. I hope they, they stay doing that. You want some bacon? Bacon's good. Oh man, bacon is so good. Ah, see, now you got me hungry. Now you got me hungry. You know, now I've got to go get more coffee, get me hungry, fall storm. You're an evil, horrible, horrible man. Shame on you. Because now you got me just like, I want some melted butter, bread. I want milk from a cow, damn it. <laughs> milk from a cow. Uh, these groups were confident that the 14, 17 judges would rule in their favor, but the mixed decision could undermine a previous ruling in the Netherlands in 2019. The Dutch Supreme Court ordered the government to cut emissions by at least 25% by the end of 2020. 2020. But they didn't. To me, it just sounds like a big money grab. That's what it sounds like to me. Because if you can get these people, oh, we'll just sue this country. And then the country says, well, please don't sue us because we're so special. We want to save the planet too. There's no saving the planet. It's going to do what it does. The extreme heat waves, the rainfalls, followed by heat waves, by, followed by snowfall, followed by thunderstorms, followed by rain. Oh my gosh, it's, it's the end of the world as we know it. But I feel fine. And what worries me is the frequency in which they all started happening more and more. No. Nope. No, they haven't. But judges ruled in favor of a group of Swiss retirees also demanding their government do more. Senior women for climate protection, which is, oh, so this was municipal workers cleaning the street that was flooded overnight and I would say algaes just outside Lisbon, but I could be wrong. Earth shattered global annual heat records in 2023, flirted with worlds agreed upon warming threshold and showed more signs of a feverish planet. <gasps> In all three cases, lawyers argue the political and civil protections guaranteed by the European Convention on Human Rights are meaningless if the planet is uninhabitable. Oh my gosh, these people are so boneheaded. It's like, why can't we just, why can't we just have have this kind of stuff that comes up? 
this is this is this is the kind of love that we we need right here instead. This is the kind of love we need right here instead. It's a masturbation notice. It's come to our attention that students have been vigorously masturbating in the school washrooms, masturbating on school property is illegal and against school district policy. The bathroom pipes are not designed to handle human discharge other than your regular bathroom duties. The excessive amount, excessive amount of discharge buildup has caused a blockage in the pipes. A pipe on the first floor E7 washroom has burst because of the excessive semen buildup. This will cost thousands of dollars coming from our funds to repair the damage. Please masturbate in your own homes. If any discharge is discovered in the bathroom, it will be collected and analyzed to determine who it belongs to. <laughs> University of Waterloo. <laughs> saw that i was just like that's got to be a joke <laughs> it's got to be a joke <laughs> excessive masturbation in the bathroom just clogging up the pipes <laughs> oh god i was just like you've got to be kidding me they don't believe this do they oh <laughs> I've got to get some more coffee. I'll be right back. In the meantime, enjoy this. Oh my gosh. did I stir up? <laughs> oh, eh, sorry. This is good. <laughs> Michelangelo has that kind of sexy voice that's, oh, it's Magic Angel. I'm sorry. Magic Angel. Shizzy Wizard has that kind of sexy voice that is so calm and soothing, soothing that it almost puts you to sleep. <laughs> well, thank you. <laughs> this has to be an April Fool's joke. I don't know. It's still damn funny. Uh, good morning, hon. <laughs> Is it all an all boys school? No, University of Wisconsin. Sounds like April Fools. It doesn't matter. It's still funny. Jamie, after we're ta done talking, done trading him around, we should take a vacation as soon as he gets on his plane. That's right. That's right. Talking about the baker. Morning, Stacy. Good morning. Uh, that's a lot of swimmers. <laughs> Shows who we're getting at, everybody. What, what did we? I saw one in here that was pretty damn funny. Uh, that, that there's more dead swimmers than <laughs> in the Apple River. 
Oh, oh, oh. Uh, hubby told me it's BS. It won't clog the toilet. <laughs> the look on his face when I asked. <laughs> yes, that was. Hey, Joe, that was a cicada. Hey, Joe, where are you going with that? Gun in your hand. <laughs> Top of the morning, gangster. Good to see you, brother. Good to see you. Man, oh, man. There's my Uber. There's my Uber. You be safe, man. You be safe. Join Jamie and Broken Baker at Broken Bakers. Yes, sir, ma'am. Sup, weirdos. Oh, good morning, everyone. She said, well, no, we'll try to jump on in a few. My son is still passed out sick in your room. Oh, I'm sorry. You said that he was he was in there with you last night. I'm sorry that he's not feeling well. Let let him let him rest. Oh my gosh, man! Oh man, crazy, crazy, crazy! I didn't have any idea he was not feeling well. Got it, got it. Good morning, Daniel. Good morning. Good morning to you. <laughs> oh my gosh, it's so crazy. This a uh, this has been a good morning to to be here. Uh, <laughs> Daniel's saying, Hey, I'll swing on by. Oh man. Oh man. It's, it's super easy to have, have mornings like this where everything just sort of falls into place. And we're, we're always, always, always happy to have Daniel come by because she's, she's a sweetheart. Ah, uh, yeah. See, love, love little D. See, Shelly. Yes, good morning, T3. Oh, Lefty. Nice. <laughs> nice eggplant. <laughs> oh, speaking of eggplants, these people right here, they're, Switzerland is not alone being affected by global warming. This problem cannot be solved by Switzerland alone. Sure it can. We could just, my idea is just, you know, let the Swiss do what the Swiss are going to do. Check this out, though. Gray wolves have been seen in South Michigan since the 1900s. So at least 25 years ago. 25 years ago, you might have seen one there. That was the 1900s. Just remember this, folks. 20 years ago was the 1900s. All right. Yeah, 20, 25 years ago, been 1900s, yeah. Uh, no, 35, 35 years ago. I'm an idiot. I can't math. I've never been able to do math really well. <laughs> Good morning, shissy expert, everyone. I'm trying to figure out what I walked in on here. Semen clock in a toilet. <laughs> well, it's the wrong ammo. Ammo's girl. Good morning, meow. <laughs> Tell you what it would be super nice that that ten thousand check from the IR ten ten thousand dollar check from the IRS. Yeah, that'd be really nice if I didn't have to have to pay taxes every year. Uh or every time we hear like nineteen uh, like that's like last week. <laughs> exactly. Exactly. So an animal in Michigan uh, an animal a Michigan hunter thought was a big coyote when he shot it in January has been determined to be a gray wolf the first time the species has been found in southern Michigan in more than a century. Well, he, now see they're changing it because not because even a half a century would have been been, you know, the 1900s. I mean a quarter a quarter of a century, just a little bit over a quarter of a century would have been 1900s. The hunter shot in wolf Shot the wolf in Calhoun County in the southern reaches of Michigan's lower peninsula while taking part in illegal coyote hunting accompanied by a guide. The man said he encountered what is initially believed a large coyote, but it weighed 84 pounds, which is significantly more than the 25 pounds oh, to 40 pounds that eastern coyotes typically weigh. Mm. So... You know, here's 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 what an interesting an interesting factoid, which I didn't know this until I was in uh, France with the wife. We went to a a uh, was it France? No, it was Italy. Sorry, in Italy with the wife, 
went to uh, a goat farm. Uh, you can you can find the video on my on my um in in my feed. I think it's under like vacations or some crap like that. Um, so we went to a, went to a, a, a cashmere goat farm in Italy. It's like this lady. She's been there since the seventies, um, and she was explaining that in in the before she moved there, uh, she was from. I think she was from the states. See, accents always throw me off. Um, but she she moved there in the seventies, and she was she was uh, say, saying that you know because all of the all of the local farms and towns people um, had you know, sort of built it up, but they, they were, they sort of died off is the best way of putting it or moved, moved away, died off the, you know, they just, they, the, the farms were not profitable. No kids were sort of taking over the farms and they just sort of let the farms go into disrepair. And, you know, some of them collapsed and they, I mean, they had good water management. They had, they had everything set up to, you know, handle, handle wildlife in a certain way there was a, a good equilibrium of uh you know there was food people would hunt they would go out and they would you know hunt for for deer uh rabbit squirrel whatever they, they would do their hunting uh they lived off of what the land supplied them but after people started dying off they started moving out and pretty soon most of the farms in this whole area just went just went to went to crap got overgrown well, whenever it got overgrown, all of the, all of the deer started moving into the area because, you know, all of the natural predators had been wiped out. Uh, the farmers, you know, gotten rid of all of the wolves, coyotes, whatever, you know, the, the natural predators. And so the deer started pretty much roaming free until they just got to a point where they had to have a natural predator in there and, they were easy prey. So the wolves started coming in. Well, the wolves, whenever they came in, they started, you know, taking out, like calling the herd. But now you've got a whole bunch of wolves there and, and they will also attack the sheep. So they have to, they have to keep all these, you know, massive, uh, what is it? Great Pyrenees or something like that. Big, big, huge white dogs. Um, no, it's not racist. Just, they're just big white dogs. Uh, the Grand Pyrenees, I think, is what they are that, that they use as sheep dogs. Um, and you know they have a, they have a serious wolf problem because you know people moved out of the area. It's the same way with us, you know, people people moving out of Michigan, they don't want to be there. <clears throat> you know, you got you got over overrun with uh, wild animals, deer, and and uh, there's lots of food and it's easy prey. Why wouldn't the wolves come in? Coyotes, coyotes, they'll, they'll kill the smaller animals, but they're not going to take down a deer. You get a pack of wolves, man, they'll take it down a deer really quick. Hmm. A series of genetic tests on the harvested animal confirmed it was a gray wolf, a species not sighted in that part of Michigan. Since the likely expert, ex, expertation of wolves from the state in the early part of the 20th century. <clears throat> Gray wolves are currently confined mo almost exclusively to Michigan's upper peninsula. A few instances of wolves being present in the state's lower peninsula in the past two decades have been at lower peninsula in northern areas, the agency added. This is an unusual case. So the DNR is actively delving into the matter to learn more about this particular animal's origin. Well, they come from wolves. Ah, gray wolves are a protected species under the Endangered Species Act, so they can be killed only if they are a direct and immediate threat to human life. But, you know, he had a practice guide with him. So, you know, hopefully this guy does not, does not have to go to jail for this. That would suck. So just imagine being this Michigan hunter that thought he was had a big coyote in his sights. He's with a guide takes down a gray wolf, comes to find out gray wolf is uh, is an endangered species. Protected species under the Endangered Species Act. So he could go, he could serve some serious time. He could serve some serious time over poor lone wolf. Well, no, it had, it had its little wolf babies there. It was trying to get some, some, some fresh action. I mean, 
Just saying. Gray wolves are protected under that Species Act. Royal said the question of how the wolf ended up in southern Michigan remains under investigation. He harbors some doubt that it ended up there naturally. Uh, he says, uh, this area of Michigan where the animal was shot does not have habitat suitable for sta- sustaining gray wolves. Well, apparently it does. This animal did get naturally to Calhoun County. It was likely just drifting, looking for others of its own kind. Poor gray wolf. Yeah, poor hunter. Lone wolf and cub. <laughs> oh, no matter how big they get. Oh, that's so awesome. Daniel, he will be. He's showing you just how much he loves you and needs his mom. You are doing an amazing job, Danielle. Don't you stress it. Don't you stress it at all. Oh, Morgan Wallace, we already read that one. Oh, my. Yeah, I, I read about this yesterday. And what is so interesting about this particular story is uh, is because I was going to talk about this yesterday, but I, I, I got off on a whole different talent chat. Uh, uh, tangent and this this is just I find hilarious a new declaration in Mexico gives 19 cats roaming the presidential palace um, food and care forever yet they just keep sending like all of these people from other countries across their land they prowl through the palace garden stalking pigeons and making cameos on televised press briefings Briefings. Some greet tourists at the doors while others take a sneaky lick of ice cream from the sna- staff. 19 feral cats have free reign of the National Palace. Well, they ain't going to be 19 cats for long if these things are feral. Ah, now the palace cats have made history after the government of Mexican President Lopez, whatever declared them to be fixed living assets, the first animals in Mexico to receive the title. Well, the investment term fixed asset usually applies to buildings and furniture, but by applying to cats, government has obligated the country's, country's treasury to give them food and care for the rest of their lives, even after the dear leader leaves office in October. The cats are now a symbol of the National Palace, just as a man. Just imagine the smell of cat urine in that place. Oh, oh my gosh. Uh, okay, okay. It was made, I have made a set. What did I mess? Nothing, really. Nothing. <laughs> it's just, this is how it goes. Good morning, Christine. I hope you're doing well. I hope you are doing well. Yahoo! This is awesome. Good morning, everyone. Farrell has a cat? Maybe. I never asked. Can they send the cats through the border and take everything else back? I'm going uh, take a cat or two happily. No, trust me. You don't want those cats. These cats were, they're, uh, they're fixed assets. So, you know, you, you can't, you can't, you can't take them anywhere. And if you, if you, if you happen to, if you happen to run one over, one of them over, it gets caught up in your radiator. You know, there's nothing you can do about it. You'll go to jail, prison, for whatever. Ah, the presidential palace has long been the seat of Mexico's executive branch. Now the resident, Lopez, has built upon a former palace of indigenous Emperor Moctezuma. Okay, ironically, Moctezuma's ancient Aztec culture honored not cats, but hairless dogs known as, I'm not even going to try to pronounce that, who were even buried with their masters? I saw this this thing today on, uh, on 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 the Twitters, and I I laugh because I know it's I know it's fake, but it just shows you the the irony of how stupid people are. Um, this is uh, and it's probably going to get me in trouble, but it's damned well hilarious. Um, <laughs> this right here is hilarious to watch. Yeah. Park here at the wall. We're the 
We saw your sign there and we thought, oh, I don't know about that. No, it just doesn't. No, there won't be much trouble. So the sign they're talking about is this sign she has on her wall is give this back, give, give the land back to the indigenous people. Or her sign says, this land belongs to the indigenous people. With a sign. We saw that sign there. We wouldn't ask. <laughs> In case you didn't see the sign. There we go. sign there. We thought, oh, I don't know about that. No, it just doesn't. No. We won't, we won't be much trouble. With a sign. There's the sign. Their sign says they are proud to acknowledge the people as the traditional owners of this land. Well, these are the traditional owners of the land. They showed up. <laughs> they said, hey, can we stay here for at least a couple of months? That sign there. We wouldn't ask only for the sign. Oh, yeah, it's a sign. It's a sign there, too. I've got an envy put it up there, so. Oh, well, we'll just live in the, in the back yeah, of the house. There's some local rabbits we can hunt down and grab. Cook it up. You have some local rabbits we can hunt down and cook it up for you. If you like rabbit, we can share that. Oh, yeah. Get some wicked yeah. rabbit. Yeah. Yeah. Just the confusion, the confused look on their face is so glorious. Why weren't they getting their land back? I didn't understand. It's so. <laughs> Like I said, it's a total setup. Just to just to watch this lady like completely panic over this. It is so funny. It wasn't going as well as I expected. We've got a dot patent here if you want one to hang up. What? A dot patent? Yeah, we've got some patents for it. Yeah. We can get it. We've got to come get some water. We want to make a cup of tea. We don't mean to have a cup of tea, but I don't know about the rest of it anyway. <laughs> He can, in, he can come in and have a cup of tea, but I don't know about the rest of it anyway. <laughs> Good morning, Dodra. Uh, no, no, they don't want their house. They just wanted to stay with her for a couple of weeks or a couple of months. Yeah. <laughs> Got to go make some raisin toast. Well, good to see you, Tammy Bugard. It's wonderful. <laughs> wonderful. <laughs> oh, my gosh. It's just hilarious. Uh Oh, I, I just, I just find it so interesting. So interesting. Mm, there's a, there's another one I have in here that, that I, that I thought was pretty cool. So this is a, this is going to be an interesting one. Many cancer drugs remain unproven five years after accelerated approval. Study finds. No, oh, these folks again. The US FDA has accelerated its its accelerated approval program is meant to give patients early access to promising drugs. But how often do these drugs actually improve or extend patients' lives? Well, in a new study, researchers found that most cancer drugs granted granted accelerated approval do not demonstrate such benefits within five years. In a new study, Five years after the initial accelerated approval, you should have a definitive answer. And of course, this is a cancer specialist, Dr. Ezekiel Emanuel, a bioethnicist. Okay. At the University of Pennsylvania, who is not involved in the research. Oh, okay. Thousands of people are getting those drugs, but that seems to mistake if we don't know whether they work or not. The program was created in 1992 to speed the access to HIV drugs. Today, 85% of accelerated approvals go to cancer drugs. They're really interesting. I know somebody that, never mind. It allows the FDA to grant early approval to drugs that show promising initial results for treating debilitating or fatal diseases in exchange. Drug companies are expected to do rigorous testing to produce better evidence before gaining full approval. Patients get access to drugs earlier, but the trade-off means some of the medications don't pan out. It's up to the FDA or the drug maker to withdraw disappointing drugs. <laughs> yeah, don't do disappointing drugs. You need to have like, like appointing drugs or something. Uh, 
Patients get access to drugs earlier, but the trade-off means some of the medications don't pan out. It's up to the FDA or the drug maker to withdraw these disappointing drugs. Sometimes the FDA has decided that less definitive evidence is good enough for full approval. New study found that between 13, 2013 and 2017, there were 46 cancer drugs granted accelerated approval. Good Lord. Of those, 63% were converted to regular approval, even though only 43 demonstrated a clinical benefit in confirmatory trials. The research was published in the Journal of the American Metal Association and discussed at the American Association for Cancer Research annual meeting in San Diego on Sunday. Well, it's sort of unclear how many patients understand about drugs with accelerated approval, but we raise this question. Is that uncertainty being conveyed to the patients? I don't think the patients really care at that point. You get the big C, man. These, it, it is, because I have, I have, a, I have a friend that is has has the big C. Um, he'll he'll be lucky to be around for Christmas. That's that's how bad it is. And at this point, he'll. He would do just about anything, just to just to extend. Um, and he's not looking for pity or sympathy or anything like that. He, you know, if if uh, if he sat down and talked with him, that would be the furthest thing from his mind. It, I mean, that that he would want to even discuss. Um, and it's uh, he he would he would do anything to you know just have have one more christmas with his with his daughters so whenever whenever i see this kind of stuff yeah it's it this is just a big money grab from the, a lot of these drug companies because people will pay any amount of money they would give up their life savings just to have one more day yeah it's rough it's rough and that's 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 the beauty of these drug companies. Gotta love them. Ah, drugs get, get get accelerated approval may be the only option for patients with rare advanced cancers. Uh, it's important for doctors to carefully explain the evidence. It might be shrinking of tumor. It might be how long the tumor stays stable. You can provide the data you have, but you shouldn't overpromise. Congress recently updated the program, giving the FDA more authority and streamlining the process for withdrawing drugs when companies don't meet their commitments. And there is some sort of bad parts to this because maybe that drug works on on a smaller portion of the population, and and uh, that's the. You know, each individual person is going to be different, but some of these drugs can cost just not not even sustainable to to produce them. It would be insane, um, especially some of these these drugs you will you'll find get sent to various other countries. I don't know if they're the guinea pigs or or what, but it just it's drug companies be bad. They they make a lot of money off of other people's pain. It's uh, it's crazy. The changes allow the agency to withdraw it, blah, blah, blah. Uh, the spokesperson, Sherry Duvall-Jones, wrote in an email the FDA can now require that a confirmatory trial be underway when it grants preliminary approval, which speeds up the process of varying, verifying whether the drug works. Associated Press Health and Science Department receives support from the Howard Hughes Medical Institute and Science Educational Media Group. The AP is solely responsible for all content. Ah, there you go. So they they have have to disclose this because if they didn't, it would they would it would show how impartial they are to a particular drug or not. Good to see you, Rosie. Good to see you. I'm so glad you could make it here. You missed something? Mm, always, always. But you're here when you're supposed to be here. You don't you don't really miss anything, especially not with me. I'm 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 completely like off the rails, like stupid. <laughs> so, not in a good way either. Not even in a good way. Ah, on to the politics. You know, uh, you know, it's always going to come. Prosecutors urge Supreme Court to reject Trump's immunity claims in election subversion case. I just every time I see a picture like this, it just makes me want to go or like hey, anything. Special counsel Jack Smith's team. Oh yeah, here comes Jack Jack Smith. He urged the Supreme Court on Monday reject 
the former president's claim that he is immune from prosecution in a case charging him with scheming to overturn the results of 2020 election. There's more to this than that. See, this is this is the problem with these folks rewording things. The brief from prosecutors was submitted just over two weeks before the justices take a legal untested question of whether an ex-president is shielded from criminal charges for official actions taken in the White House. A president's alleged crime criminal scheme to use his official powers to overturn the presidential election in Florida. But he's never been short. Ah, oh, Jesus. Ah. Ah. The outcome of the April 25th arguments is expected to help determine whether Trump faces trial this year in a four-count indictment that accuses him of conspiracy, conspiracy <laughs> to block the peaceful transfer of power. But was there a peaceful transfer of power? If there was, doesn't matter. Doesn't matter. Trump has argued former presidents enjoy immunity from official acts in office. Both the judge presiding over the case have forcefully rejected that claim. Really? That's always good to know. <laughs> That's always good to know that they rejected that claim. Ah. Uh, because this is where it's going to get a little hairy. This is where it gets a little bit hairy. They reject the claim. Why? Because, well, it's all because they don't want that man to even, even, even darken their doorstep again. They are so scared of him. <laughs> they are so scared. It's hilarious. Uh, the Supreme Court then said it would take up the question, injecting uncertainty in, into whether the case, one of four criminal prosecutions, the presumptive nominee for president can reach trial before November's election. Well, this is, this is what, and then of course they'll, if he, if, and when he does win, then they'll spend the next four years going after him still. Cause that's what they do. But this sets unprecedented, bad precedent for later and later presidents, even a current president that you have in place which they've called too stupid and incompetent to basically even handle, you know, government documents. Isn't that wonderful? In their latest brief, Smith's team rehashed many of the arguments that prevailed in lower courts, pointing notably that federal criminal law applies to the president. The framers never endorsed criminal immunity for a former president, and all presidents from the founding to the modern era have have known that after leaving office, they face, face potential criminal liability for ish, official acts. Really? That's, that's never good. Prosecutors said that even the Supreme Court were recognized some immunity for a president's official acts. The justices could nonetheless permit the case to move forward because much of the indictment is centered on Trump's private conduct. Okay such as Smith's team suggests the court could now reach a narrow determination that Trump in this particular case was not entitled to immunity without arriving at a broader conclusion that would apply to the other cases. A holding that petitioner has no immunity from alleged crimes would suffice to resolve this case, leaving potentially more difficult questions that might arise on different facts for decisions if they were ever presented. So basically they have other things that they want to bring in there. That's really interesting. By all, have some things to do. Well, JD fan, you have a wonderful one. We will see you on the flip side, brother. You you have a, a wonderful one. Uh, that would do it, Nosy Roji. Later, JD fan. Bye, JD fan. Have a blessed day. Let's <laughs> see. Nosy Rosie, that's wonderful to see you, my friend. Aw. Aw. Good not food. Damn autocorrect. <laughs> King Paco, good morning. Good morning. You saved morning. Well, I hope so. I hope so. I hope something got saved. Ah. Uh, speaking of weird stories, we got this one. More than 200 women and several men accused doctor in lawsuit of uh, SA. Unnecessary exams. Hmm. What is up with the hair? Are they going to bring the beehive back? I hope so. Make women suffer more. <laughs> uh, 
<laughs> I'm just waiting for the beehive to come back. More than a decade ago, where they were the wigs because they just couldn't couldn't keep up with it. More than a decade ago, Kristen Fritz was struggling with pain in her spine and saw a rheumatologist recommended by her doctor at Brigham's and Women's Hospital in Boston. The visit with Dr. Tarek, Derek Todd started normally for the 37-year-old New Hampshire woman, but as Todd progressed, he aggressively, okay, he was, he was groping on her, her, on her boobies, she said to the point that he seemed to enjoy that a little too much. Okay, only last year when contacted by the hospital about Todd, she realized a line had been crossed and she was not alone. Ladies, if you ever feel a line is being crossed, tell the dude lines being crossed back the F off. Or you're about to pick up your, your nads out of, out of your back pocket. Yeah. Only last year when contacted by the hospital, I feel so violated. She told the Associated Press, I feel ashamed of myself for not knowing better in the moment to do anything like that and be like, yeah, this did feel wrong and I should tell somebody. Yeah, think. Like address issues like that right away. Whenever the line gets crossed, yeah, back, the, back those sons of bucks off. I mean, you, you, th- there's a reason why women should carry firearms. I'm just saying. Dude, dude got a little frisky with her in, in the uh, examining room. Why? Why, dude? And if this guy was doing stuff like that, why didn't the hospital step in much sooner? I guess it just took enough reporting on it to to make it through. Now, also, I, I, will, I will disclaim here that I don't know the facts of this case. I'm only going by what the AP said. So there's a possibility that that this is this is a made up story. I don't know. See, so you know, all people are innocent until proven guilty. But I will tell you right now, if dude starts groping up on some lady, she don't want it. Hell come hell or high water. There's a there's a there's a couple of knees, fists claws, whatever you need to do. And don't feel ashamed. It's not your fault there, sweetheart. Yeah, this this lady should never feel ashamed for not knowing better in the moment. That, that sometimes women can be in shock. It's more common than you think. Well, that is true. That is true. The Associated Press generally doesn't identify possible victims of SA, but Fritz allowed her name to be used. She is more than She is one of more than 200 women and several men who have joined a consolidated lawsuit against Todd in the Superior Court. The lawsuit combining several filed last year accuses Todd of performing unnecessary pelvic floor therapy, breast examination, testicular examinations, and rectal examinations on on, on patients. Wow, like crazy. It alleges that Todd, a former rheumatologist at Brigham and Women's Hospital, who especially involves treating inflammatory conditions of the muscles, joints, and bones, began abusing patients in 2010. He also he's all, it also accused several dozen other defendants, including the hospital and Charge River Medical Associations associates, of knowing about the abuse and failing to stop it. Thank you. I am hopeful. Have we got another Larry Nasser? <clears throat> I am a spunky country girl stuck in the city. If someone did that to me, they would be sitting someone's bones. On <laughs> None of mine. Yeah. Uh, that's not what I'm saying. It's shitty. <laughs> I'm just giving you a hard time. Just giving you a hard time. Like, oh my God. Hey, how are you doing, Chris Mullen? My gosh. The other thing that strikes me about this case is his uh it's extraordinary number of people who put their trust in this guy who had that trust violated simply for his own personal selfish gratification and william uh thompson of lubin and meyer wait a second that that group i just talked about them yesterday i looked up something about lubin and meyer I looked up something about them yesterday. Damn it. What was it? There's another case that they're handling. Because this is what they do. They handle they handle these kind of cases. Like, 
especially civil action cases, they get lots of money off of it. They may be going after, they're going after somebody else too. Hmm. Now I'm a little suspicious. Now I'm, now I'm a little bit suspicious. Hmm. Yet they allowed him to continue to this week after that name. Damn, this, this group right here, William Thompson, Lubin, and Meyer. Where did I see that? I'm going to do a search for that because I heard about this, this group of people. Medical malpractice. Hmm. New Hampshire medical malpractice. Lubin and Meyer. Catastrophic personal injury law. Oh, maybe maybe it was somebody else. Damn it! Just see, they just personal injury. Jeez, I just know it from somewhere. Damn, that just sounds really damn familiar. Somebody was going going after somebody else, and I thought it was this group. Anyhow, the other thing that strikes me about this case is how could it have, have this been going on at the hospital, at the practice group for so long without somebody wrecked? They allowed him to continue to do this week after week, month after month, year after year to more and more victims. A lawyer for Todd uh, said his client would not litigate this matter in the media, but he will defend his care as the cases progresses through the superior court system. Absolutely. Good job, Mr. Todd. Don't do this with the media. It is, they can have a God complex and the power makes them feel untouchable. That could happen. That could happen. Oh, check your history for the search and look what you had last refresh before the search. Nah, it would have been, uh, it would have been like a week ago, a month ago, something like that. It just sounds really familiar. Brigham and Women's received two anonymous complaints about Todd and launched an internal investigation in 2023, April of 2023. Todd was told he couldn't conduct sensitive exams without a chaperone. In June, he was placed on administrative leave, then terminated a month later. The hospital said it also notified the Department of Public Health, State Board of Res Registration in Medicine, Law Enforcement, and his current and former patients. <clears throat> In September, Todd reached a voluntary agreement with the Board of Registration and Medicine to stop practicing medicine anywhere in the country. <clears throat> no criminal charges have been filed against Todd, but several former patients have been interviewed by law enforcement. <clears throat> Last year, Todd was under investigation in the, in the Suffolk County, Suffolk, sorry, County District Attorney's Office. The spokesperson for the office said it would not comment on the case. We're deeply troubled by the upsetting allegations of harmful conduct committed by Dr. Todd. We take our duty care for our patients and keep them safe and extremely seriously. We have and always will act decisively on any allegations of misconduct as we did in this case. Oh my. Thompson said the victims range in age from teenagers to women in their 60s. Ah, jeez, teen. Teenagers? Jeez, dude, really? Uh, he would go beyond treating their rheumatic diseases, becoming their only doctor while conducting invasive, unnecessary exams. Among them was a 33-year-old Massachusetts woman who struggled to find a doctor during the, the, the coof. She was thrilled Todd called to help her with symptoms of tingling and numbness in her arms and hands. Over two years, he became her primary doctor and gynecologist, and the lawsuit said the abuse intensified during her visits including repeated vaginal exams. He said, she said Todd would routinely comment on her body, ask her to strip naked and make sure she was unaccompanied during exams. Ah, oh, dude, creep. Oh, creep. Oh, if that is true. Uh, having two rheumatologists for three years, never once had they examined my breasts or vagina. I don't have any joints in any of those areas. Well, are you mad that they never examined or are you just, just mad at this dude because, I mean, I, I hope, I, I don't know. Some some people might. Oh, okay. Glad you're not the only one. Oh, my gosh. Sorry. No. Oh, weird. She said Todd would, uh, it honestly impacted every single component of my life because it just occupies every part of myself from your self-confidence. Man, what an ass. 
He report, she who reported Todd to the medical board after discussing his behavior with her gynecologist and realizing there was something wrong. Yeah, there's something wrong with this crap. Since learning there were many others that Todd would no, would no longer practice medicine, she said a weight has been lifted off her chest. Though she struggles to cope, I just even thinking about work is super challenging. I'm really, 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 really struggling today, big time. As for Fritz, she acknowledged the experience will stay here with her for the rest of the life, but she takes solace in the fact that Todd is already paying a price for his actions. You were a trusted medical professional in a world-class facility. You abused and violated many, many, many patients. It's just not right. For me, justice is him never being able to practice again, him never being able to do this to women or to any other patient that he has done this to. <clears throat> yeah, there's a place in hell for people like that. There is a serious place in hell for people like that that abuse that kind of power just to get a little bit touchy feely. Yeah. Not so suspicious anymore. I just have a hard time tolerating people that do this kind of crap. It is not cool, not wanted, not warranted, not needed. Ah. Let's see if I got. I'll see if I can play this for you guys. This is pretty cool. I saw this this morning. One of the first things I pulled up, I was like, this is going to be pretty damn, pretty damn neat. Check this out. Now, there's music that usually plays with this, but look at this. Watch, watch, watch how fast hand springs off, tosses. Right there. That is impressive. When I saw that, I was like, damn. Just the, that ta that takes a lot. Of course, he's probably just a tiny little thing anyway, but still, that was pretty damn impressive. <laughs> Looked like she was about to get a gynecological exam. So have you guys heard about Elisa? Jordania. Now, I don't condone any of this. Yeah. Wow. It was, it was awesome. I'm pissed at the doctor for a second. Oh, okay. Yeah. Teens, that should make you angry. Should make you very angry. I'm just giving you a hard time, Melissa, Debbie. I'm just giving you a hard time. <laughs> just don't, don't be too mad. I like to, I like to poke fun at, at, at things. Um, this is, Something that's that that uh, should should not be happening at all. This is uh, also something that shouldn't be happening, and I didn't know this, but what I understand, this person used to work for uh, for Howard Stern, and don't condone what this guy says. Don't condone what she says, and this is just this is absolutely horrible and. And I, I am, I'm only showing this to give an example of how bad people are, how bad people are and how bad people can be. So just don't take anything out of context on this one. It's about two and a half minutes long and it's not pretty. It's not pretty at all. So all that disclaimer stuff, here we go. So apparently she was on Discord whenever this happened. Hi, Sarah. How are you? How are you, Sarah? Hi. Hi. And, you know, different sentences that he... Sarah, I'm sorry uh, about this. Don't talk. Don't fucking talk. Idiot. Uh, yes, Sarah, we're really sorry about this and sending him your way today. Uh, so don't worry. Um, but yeah, so... Yeah, he's coming. Don't worry, he's coming home. Uh, She's just like all those broke my nose. She's gonna get arrested. No, no, you're fine. You're fine. Fuck you, cunt. Um. Next time you fucking touch me, I'll fucking dick you. You understand? Um, you understand, cunt? On hey, there. Um, Sarah, hang up. These idiots. She posted your fucking number in her cancer Discord, and I was just being polite. Uh, yeah, touch me, and I fucking dick your dumbass bitch. I'll fucking dick you. Alisa, yes. Um, as a woman, the dumb cut, Sarah, the dumb retard in the middle of a session, and you choose to leave it under from the chat. 
she, she, no, she's a, she's a fucking insane person. She's a she's a fucking. I would stop talking about. Oh yeah. oh yeah, oh yeah, I'm in the I'm middle of the street okay, dancing. Yeah. Yes, Sarah, I heard you had a kid when you were 16. That's what he told me about you. Yeah, she had and he a said kid. you're a dumb Mexican. I said she's a dumb Mexican. And he said you, you keep showing up. And he says you won't stop texting him. But I saw what? the text. It's the same shit. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. What's up? No, it's not humor. It's not humor. Oh, we're not showing any more of that. It is not. It is not fake. I assure you, it is not fake. Um, no, no, it's not. This is this is a couple having a crisis live on a Discord channel. Uh, yeah. What the f was that? Yeah, wow. That is a couple having an argument and not a pleasant one. Pulling hair, grabbing each other, slapping each other, punching each other, him calling her names. This happened live on a Discord. Social media folks, wonderful. That's Howard, one of Howard Stern's former employees. Her, not him. She started slapping him, started punching him because he wouldn't, he wouldn't talk. He wouldn't stop talking. Still doesn't give him a right to grab her. I would have, I would have, I would have uh, probably had her pull over much sooner, got out and walked somewhere. I wouldn't have, I wouldn't have tolerated that from anybody. And these two clearly are in, in a state of crisis. Uh, pretty one side, one side, not an argument. Uh, that's a guy that let a woman, that's let a woman abuse him. Absolutely. This is just a relationship. I would bet good money on it. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> that's a guy that's let, lets a woman abuse him. Yeah. That was pretty one-sided and not an argument. Uh, he can't take a hit? I mean, come on, buddy. Take, take a hit. I volunteered to do the kicking. <laughs> equal rights and equal lefts. Yeah, please. Howard Stern was always garbage. True. No, he should have been gone a long time ago. Yes. <laughs> Whether he can or not, nobody should be forced to be hit just because they're a man. But if he'd hit her that way, he'd been arrested immediately. Well, and here's the thing. I, I, I can see what's going on here in the, in the, in the background. And it's not, it's not pretty. So he's got her basically in a headlock and uh, holding her head down. He's got her pulled over, got the car stopped. And uh, she's, yeah, she um, she is wrong, but no man hits or grabs a woman. Um, to get them to stop swinging, you most certainly should do something to defend yourself. And I'm not saying that you uh, that you abuse them or any of that sort, you know. But yeah, don't don't allow women or anybody to to attack you like that. No, he's got a got a hold of her. Oh wow. Wow. He does have some weak little arms though. He just threw out of the car. Whoa. Pulled over, put the car in park. Man. Trust me, it ain't fake. Um. Wow. Yeah, I had to I had to watch the 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 rest of that because I, I wasn't gonna show it to you guys. 
Come on, now we're all modern and light world progressiveness now. Biden's America, equal rights and equal loves. When things get that bad, it's time to go. Yeah, yeah, a long time ago. I'll see Jen. Good morning, dear. How are you? Uh, let's call this couple Tammy and the T-Rex. Yeah, he does have some weak little arms. I didn't realize it got that bad. Oh, my gosh. Late joining today. Hope everyone is in good spirits. Yes, mad Englishman. Good to see you fine, sir. We will not talk about that last bit. That was that was horrible. I remember a story from a neighbor when I was a kid. Guy had a had a punching bag in the garage. He was once asked by his wife why he went out there and hit the punching bag so much. <laughs> yeah. 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 Well, he replies, Bagger, if you want me to change, let me know. Yeah. Well, and if you have those kinds of anger issues towards towards someone that you're with, oh boy, you've got you've got to you've got to really change things. Oh man, I was I was sort of hoping that Tom Tom Gillis would be here this morning because I wanted to ask him all about something, but won't do it. Won't do it. All right, this is uh, the music will get me in trouble here. So let's make sure we don't play the music. This one is a much happier one. Uh, yeah, that's a movie title's reference. It, oh, no, no, no. Don't you don't you worry about it. You're fine. Hey, Shizzy, I pulled a Shizzy this morning. Went and did muted. <laughs> Man, I don't know how well a heavy bag is for therapy is to build punching power. True. No woman should put their hands on a man. Well, come on, you know. Some guys like, you know, having having that female touch. <laughs> uh, not, not not mean not mean touch. This is this is good. You're gonna you're gonna like this. This should lighten the mood up a little bit. So no music, but this is pretty cool. So mom and her little boy. She's got some red dye. Dropped a Mentos in there, I guess. Holy cow. Look at this. Look at this. Three years old. Pretty cool. Pretty damn cool. I thought that was pretty neat. What a way to celebrate a kid's three, third, three-year-old birthday. Oh, it says it is digitally altered. It just says there's uh, there exists no liquid that is lighter than air under Earth's atmosphere and temperature. Huh? There exists no liquid that is lighter than air. Okay. But oh, so this is this is one for for you guys. Just um, just remember. Yeah, it was neat. It was neat. It was awesome, but it was also fake. <laughs> so there you go disclaimer it was fake it was fake it was not true uh uh it's not liquid is released from the gas it's from the liquid yeah but it was still fake i'm just i'm just giving what they they said it was they said it was fake so i i don't know it's it, it did once I saw it, it did look fake where the thing was filled up with fluid because there's no way that could fill up with fluid inside of it and then drop like that. Yeah, it was a, yeah, super awesome, but super fake. But this one, this one is, uh, let me make sure there's no music. Oh, yeah, there's no music. But listen to this guy's response. Listen to this guy's response. It's only it's only a, about a minute long. You'll you'll like this. You'll like this, and you will have a good laugh. Dude, nice cock! Oh my gosh! No way you go all the way. That was one good stroke right there. I've only ever seen white cock. This is my first time ever seeing black cock. It looks nice. I'm a fan now. Nice! Dude, you are so steady. Like, how is your hand that steady? Oh, that was beautiful. Oh, yeah. I got to get me some black cock now. 
Dude, this is life changing. I'm so satisfied watching this. How did you do all that with your hands? <laughs> That's talent. That's seriously talent. Dang, you're a pro. I want to be just like you one day. <laughs> <laughs> this is amazing. a lot of cock <laughs> that hurts <laughs> it's just he's done for the day <laughs> oh, oh so many wor Welsh words to say <laughs> he's still all those jokes. <laughs> oh, oh. <laughs> oh, so so tell me, you guys, how many people have flown in the past like a uh, couple of years? So how would you feel if if this happened to you? How would you feel if this happened to you? This is this is your pilot. Just how would you feel if your okay, pilot you showed up into this? Get off the airplane, but this is your captain you. speaking, okay. but never like Just this. I'll stop, and I will fly the airplane. Don't worry, I'm going to let my co-pilot fly it. He's a man. Okay? It's a total meltdown. The pilot okay, boarded in her okay, street clothes airplane, and addressed the passengers over okay. the intercom. Passenger Pam O'Neill couldn't believe what was happening. She said, let's take a vote. How many of you would like to take off now with me dressed as I am, or would you prefer that I take 10 minutes to get changed into my cute little uniform? Then she started talking about her divorce and political candidates. And the minute she mentioned that, um, a gentleman stood up and just yelled, whoa, enough, you're scaring me. Another passenger, Randy Reese, got up to leave and gave a running commentary on social media. Pilot also insulted a couple on board. Did I offend you? Okay, so did I purposely offend you? I did. The answer is yes. Flight attendants, please disarm doors. After 20 passengers insisted on getting off the United Airlines flight, the pilot quietly left the aircraft. Okay, if you don't feel safe, get off the airplane. Shizzied again. <laughs> Shizzied it again. Boomer. <laughs> Jeez, Shizzy. <laughs> yeah, get off that plane now. That is absolutely what I would do. <laughs> she's drunk or high. No, 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 she's not. That's... She, she might be having some sort of mental crisis. You shizzied. Yes, I shizzied. <laughs> hey, Zach, how you doing? <laughs> yeah, so you agree this guy is pretty late to the party. The Aussie commercials are decades old and actually funny. I know, I know. It's, it's, it's funny. Even funny, my husband and I were just talking about replacing the cock around the bathroom tub. I guess I'm going to suggest you want black cock. <laughs> <laughs> make sure it's thick <laughs> menopause mm, i don't know that woman needs needs something oh yeah i would have gotten off that plane immediately i would have said no no anybody showing up anybody showing up doing that kind of stuff and just like i don't know <sighs> or 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 uh, or a pilot that says you know he's gonna he's gonna uh um 
you know, bow his head to a certain direction or something like that before uh, he takes a plane. Um, and, and my, my wife would too, as much as, you know, she might be a, uh, a communist or whatever, she would be the same way. <laughs> She'd be like, I'm out of here. Uh, we had an, we had an issue a while back. Uh, um, we were, we were um, having, having some work done at our, at our old, old house. Um, this is, oh, and it sucks so bad because we, we put the house on the market and it, and it, um, it was, it was being sold basically as is nothing wrong with the house, did a whole lot of work on it. And, uh, so somebody wanted to purchase it basically as a teardown because they were putting up a bunch of Mick mansions in the neighborhood. And, you know, someone came by and made an offer. Um, and we were about to remodel the bathroom, you know, just cause we figured we were going to be there for at least another couple more years. Might as well enjoy the, the bathroom remodel. And, uh, they, they backed out at the last minute the house didn't, didn't sell. And so we ended up remodeling the bathroom. Well, in the process of it, the wife decided to, that she wanted to have, she was just like, you're, you're too busy with work. You don't have time because whenever I remodeled our first bathroom, which I did an awesome job on, um, it, it took probably about three weeks to do it all by myself. I mean, I had, I had a uh, busted joy, floor joists and crap like that, that I had to replace. So it took a little bit longer, but it got it all taken care of. Anyhow, she didn't want, want me to, to do it again. You know, although she was happy with what was done, it just, she, she wanted to have something done much quicker. So she hired a company, um, without, without me, you know, having a whole lot of input on it. Uh, she was like, what do you think? I was like, I don't know. I mean, you, you decide I'm, I'm cool with, with whomever, you know, I, I, I trust that you're going to, you know, do its best. Well, apparently she hired the, not not the not the cheapest. She didn't really like the one that was going the cheapest, but she was impressed with the first one or the second one that came out. They came out, and uh, she probably should have fired them on, on the first day because they were going to put in a pocket door, and they stopped to pray over it. If somebody is praying over doing, uh, taking out a wall <laughs> in your house, fire them immediately. <laughs> just trust me on that fire them immediately if you're having to pray over doing a good job please please just fire them <laughs> yeah she had me finish the, she had me finish the work i ended up doing all of the tile work but yeah they they took out the wall and it was not it was she was not happy. She was like, I should have known something was going to go haywire. Oh, and it did. They, they cost too much to, you know, ended up costing us more than it should have because, well, they were idiots. Uh, you all need real Aussie caulking. <laughs> oh, my gosh. Ah. Uh, Oh my gosh, what is this? Tell me about this. Oh, um, let me see. What does. Oh my gosh, what just happened? I know, so I, I could feel something happened. I could feel it. I could feel it deep down inside. Something is coming up and hey riding hood want to be eaten by the big bad wolf fuck you new bomb <laughs> good morning danielle good morning i'd put my camera on but it's like so dark in here like look oh, no. <laughs> don't you worry about it i love the shirt no, you don't. You don't have to worry about it. Thank you. Seventy three Pink Floyd, Dark Side of the Moon. <laughs> yeah, it's pretty bad. Uh, <laughs> How are you this I'm morning? I am good. I am really good. I've been watching. I just haven't had a chance to hop on until I could find some room to do so. <laughs> oh no, I I understand. I understand. Yeah. Have you seen this? Watch this with the kids. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> I'm 
Oh my gosh, what did it do? Put him to sleep? No, they freaked out. She no, uh, the kid. He so did what, it look, what it looked like whenever he, for their point of view, all they could see was the back and the top of his shoulders. So whenever whenever he had that balloon sitting in front of him, he they couldn't see that. She took the thing and put it over his head. And as she was putting it, he put the balloon on, on the back of his neck. So it looked like she put it over the top of his head. Uh -huh. Okay. And then she turned it and then popped the balloon and they thought the head exploded. Oh, I see. She took it off. His neck is still facing down. So they think she exploded his head and it's not there. Aww, they're, they're that's like funny. Out. Just, it's all the angle. It's all yeah. the angle. I gotcha. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I'm too funny. Oh my gosh, I just stopped laughing and start all over again trying to catch your breath. <laughs> See, this this is what I do to people. I, I get the I try to get them laughing after showing them horrible things. Oh. Well it worked. It's funny it's stuff you find. Just the fact that you find them in itself is what makes it funny. <laughs> Oh, <laughs> this, this one's a good one too. Check it out. The, the music might be, get me in trouble. I don't know, but we'll check it out because it's. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, the music oh, get me in trouble. <laughs> they thought he got hurt. He just jumped off and threw himself on the ground. He's just got a good sense of humor. No, no, he's doing it to to mess with the lady. He's just like, oh gosh, yeah. no. But he has no legs, obviously. Or is it Yeah, yeah. he has no legs. That's funny. <laughs> <laughs> oh, no, I, I I think my feed gets all up in this kind of stuff where um I have uh oh man. I've got one that that's I'm gonna to have to find something that's that's more happy after this. This is this is one that that I don't know if it has. Yeah, I think there there is music, but this this is a a, a reminder. This is a reminder that that uh, these guys need us a whole lot. Just a, a nice a nice gentle nudge for all you fine people. This is a a man that served his time in the military and just. I'll mute it because the music. And it says, realizing that brotherhood was fading away. Um, he uh, sitting around on a weekday, eating alone for the first time in a long time, couldn't think. Uh, all he had left was memories. Couldn't relate to anyone outside of service. And he became more quiet more reserved, scared, realizing that this was it in my new life. He misses his brothers every day. For those of you that got out, you're not alone. Stay up. Oh. Mm-hmm. That has to be hard. It is. Getting out of the service and adjusting to the civilian life and all over again and sitting with what you once had. Yeah. Oh yeah. And well, and it, it becomes difficult because there's, there's a, and he's, he's telling everybody stay up, you know, don't, 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 don't let this get you down. Speaking of staying up, this is pretty funny. Oh, God. Is that? <laughs> you didn't see? I didn't see what he did. Oh, there you go. He lights he lights the uh firecracker. Oh, it's a fire. And he drops the lighter in the Oh my gosh. <laughs> Jeez. <laughs> This one's even better. This one's even better. Uh, this one, this one got me this morning. Ah, oh, here we go. We're gonna have to get the butter. 
Oh. <laughs> Joey, what did you do? Oh no. Oh my gosh. Oh. <laughs> well, bud, we might have to do this the hard way. No, let mama help. I know what. Okay, I ain't gonna get out. Why do you doing this? Why you doing this? Oh, there you go. <laughs> <laughs> That's funny. The dogs are like, let me help. <laughs> let me help. We'll get you out of there. Yeah. That kid is braver than I would have been. That's like one of my most like biggest fears. Oh, is getting stuck like that? Yeah, getting stuck. Or like crawling in a hole and not being able to get out. <laughs> that would be my luck. Oh my gosh. That's funny. What is this? This I've got to see. I love this. We've got... We've got the children screaming here. This is awesome. <laughs> she lit that thing that's up. Funny. Yeah. Oh. That's funny. So that's I a good way to release some frustration, I guess. <laughs> Did I show you this? Did you were you watching yesterday? Did you see this one? Because this Maybe. is hilarious. You saw this one? No, I don't think so. Oh, you're gonna love this. How much do I owe you for rent again? Uh eight hundred dollars. I just don't have a lot of money at the moment. Is there something else that I could give you instead? No, I'd probably just like the money. Could I interest you in one tip. I'd really just appreciate the money. There's so much surface area, you know, so many options. I don't really want that. And I'm into everything. Holding hands, tongue in mouth, oh my God. showering with my clothes off, watching each other. Go number two. <clears throat> you know what? Let's just forget it. Okay. Really? Yeah. Well, I mean, it's just monopoly money. Okay. Thanks. Oh my god. <laughs> That's funny. That's one way to play monopoly. <laughs> <laughs> it's just like <laughs> just Sean Bird, tug and mouth as opposed to what. <laughs> As supposed to work? Would you put your tongue otherwise? Yeah. Oh, so didn't we? See, we saw this just what was it last last week? So this, it was, it was not too long ago. Tell me, does this not look familiar? Uh, it's all about family. It's a tradition in our family. We all we turn off that right there. We always say what we're grateful for before we start eating. Good. Um. So I'd like to start to say that I am. So incredibly honored and grateful to have you at our table and to be able to share this meal for all you and your family. My dad used to have the expression and her dad practiced well. Family is the beginning, the middle, and the end. Mm -hmm. Didn't we just see this like not too long ago? So he now like he's going, going after the Italians. Didn't we see this? Like he was, he was at some, he got ordered some food for like, uh, I think it was Mexican food or something like that. Mm -hmm. uh, <sighs> Got to show you this. This is hilarious. Oh my gosh. <laughs> what is that like a camera like i'm confused no, it's it's a video that somebody 
this this is the the wine bottle is falling is actually a video that you can find on like YouTube, oh. where <laughs> it's just this bad accident where all this stuff flows over so yeah this is staged but it's still hilarious oh i see of course <laughs> i have to fix up the tv and it all falls yeah camera yeah. Work, camera trickery i see uh, that would probably confuse me too <laughs> Yeah. Or just do my luck. Something would fall as soon as I start cleaning it. <laughs> like you drop the whole TV. Like, great. Mm -hmm. Good job on me. Good job on me. Oh. Got to turn this music off because the music is, is killer. But watch, watch this impressive motorcycle race. All right. Here we go. Hits his brakes. Yeah, this is this is real right here. Like he's hitting yeah, his brakes, tell. and it's and it's happening so fast. And there's somebody on that other one. Yeah. yeah. Oh my god. Yeah, making that turn, and I mean, this this uh -uh. is how fast they're going. You know, they're, you're hitting what, a couple hundred miles. Yeah, uh, over a hundred miles an hour, and this this happens. This this goes by in just seconds. Like catching that turn, and dude's lucky he's not flying over the handlebars. So wild! Oh my gosh! Wow! <laughs> yeah. Uh -oh. And why try to balance that? you know, that thing. And to begin with, <laughs> but you want to know that. Yeah. You wanna, do you want to know the truth about it? What's that? It's from a video game. Is it really? <laughs> yeah. It looks so real. Yes. Wow. Yes, it does. Well, it though? I believed it. <laughs> <laughs> oh, so listen, well, I won't do that to you. Um, oh my gosh. Oh my gosh. Oh, there was something somebody showed me the other day. I've got to pull it up. It's on, it was on Discord. Let me see if I've got it. Who was it that sent it to me? It was Fubar. Fubar sent that to me. But whoa, we we've got it. We got another one here that this is. Um, all right. Is that the one? No, that's a different one. There was there was one that somebody showed me. Don't got it. I don't care. I'm not gonna. I'm not gonna read that one. Nope. Sorry. But you. Oh wait, wait, wait. Oh. Oh, here we go. Here we go. I am going to find this this story. And bring this 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 one up. Here we go. A police officer was fired after OnlyFans account was found. That would that would be bad. Yeah. So the police it was the police officer's OnlyFans account, or yes, it was her OnlyFans account. You know, there's a lot of like, uh, you hear a lot about teachers having these OnlyFans account because they can't make it on a teacher budget. And so they end up doing OnlyFans and then they get caught and it goes on the news. <laughs> it's, it is, but what, what does it matter? Exactly. You know, if, if they're, if they're doing OnlyFans, like who's looking at these? Yeah, the teachers I mean, get end up getting fired for it. We'll see the students end up finding it somehow or another. Well, and that that is that is the that is the bad part about it. Is mm -hmm. like, you know, it do, do I think that OnlyFans should be you know teachers should be having to do that? Well, no, but it's not it's not my problem. Right. In the scheme of it, look at this. This is not impressive. This is they're making these little. Uh, Cement, and I don't believe these are for like bird baths. That's what it looks like. Looks like a pedestal for like a, a bird bath or something like that. Hmm. But yeah, they're just they make the cement, they roll them out, pop them all in there, and away you go. 
Little I have a bird bath rug. in my front yard, and people like people will knock it down, and that thing's heavy. Like, what what's the point of knocking it down just to be an ass? You know. Well, do you, do you have a giant Trump sign out there, or do you, a giant Biden Ooh, sign? No. <laughs> I'm just a target for destruction. <laughs> My wife and I, we make jokes about it all the time because, you know, there's there's people that are just like, oh, you know, who why, why aren't you showing your support for, for whatever this cause is or something like that, right? Both my wife and I, whenever we first got married, we knew that we were mm-hmm. political opposites. I was like, I was like, do I really want to bring this kind of harassment to to me because I support somebody or support yeah. some cause? And she was in total agreement. Like there's, there's no, there's no point in having, you know, any sort of political statement up there. I agree. Not in your yard. No. That's, I mean. That's kind of, yeah. And it's, it's not that, you know, you, you can't be proud of who, who your support, who you throw your support for, but whenever you start having to announce it to your whole neighborhood, I mean, oh. not, why, like why? I've never why? understood that. I don't, I, I mean, I do it here on the YouTubes, but you know, the YouTubes isn't real. This is really pretty. It's uh, now if we had a Mo sign, we could put that. I'd put it in my yard. <laughs> oh yeah, absolutely. Any day. Oh, that is really cool. Mm-hmm. Wow. So this is the, this is resin that they've that they've poured out and formed in the, each one of the stairs. That's so neat. Yeah, this is some talent right there. And they got the depth to it. Yeah. Of course, you know, they look really pretty to start out with, but this this epoxy resin, man, it'll scuff up after a while. <laughs> yeah, I was going to say, how do you keep that clean? <laughs> but the cool thing is, is you can just, you know, scuff it out and re- reapply. Uh, sure. Like, it just seems like a lot of work. <laughs> well, for that, but it's to neat. Make it look like that. Mm-hmm. I mean, come oh, on. to make it look like that, I'm sure it took a lot of work, but keep it, keep it up. Yeah. Yeah, but if you're if you're paying that kind of money for it, you know, that's probably could pay somebody to do it. Yeah, that is impressive. It's beautiful. It's different. Oh, I don't know if this has music to it, but it's it's going to be pretty hilarious. Let me share this. This is pretty pretty funny. <laughs> Oh my gosh. <laughs> the outfit's pretty wild, it is. Is it, is it really? I don't know. Well, it, I get it. <laughs> <laughs> That's hilarious. Oh. This one has music to it, but I saw this and I thought it was pretty. It and it doesn't go where you think it is, so you have to you have to be ready for it. As you're as you're watching, just pay attention. <laughs> oh my god. <laughs> That's funny. Oh my gosh. Oh, that, that made that made my day. That made yeah. My day. But That's not funny. as not as much as this does. Not as much as this does. This one, so I don't know if you've gotten any yet. Whenever whenever you see it, you'll you'll sort of understand if you haven't if you haven't seen this before. Do you see what she's doing? Yeah, I think so. She's watching hummingbirds. Yeah. Is that a little kid? Yes. Wow. A little girl is sitting there watching hummingbirds. Sitting not still. still. Is, yes, sitting wow. not still just so she can watch the hummingbird. That's pretty cute. So we we get hummingbirds um, every every year. Um, like 
at least at least three of them. Mm-hmm. And what was it last week? No, it was the weekend before last. I, I was talking with the wife and she was just like, oh, you know, I'm thinking I'll I'll put them out next week. It's a little bit too early. I was like, no, you should you should put those out. She was, oh, we're supposed to get some more coal and I don't want to, you know, go through. I was like, I was like, really, just you know. Just, just do it. I, you know, I, I just have a feeling this year they're going to show up early and sure as hell, like within, she did that on uh Sunday before last, she put mm-hmm. it out and that Monday morning, um, right after I finished, finished my stream, I went up and I was pouring myself some more coffee and, uh, and I'm looking out the window and I'm used to seeing the carpenter bees fly around and everything. Mm-hmm. And I look and I was just like, I was like, Hey wife, she was what? I said, come here. She goes, okay. So she walks over and as soon as she walked over, the hummingbird like stopped, you know, in its tracks because it was feeding the feeder. It stopped, it looked towards us and it zipped off and she just, it, it just, it makes her get all excited and all flustered. That's awesome. Because she gets to see, she gets to see the hummingbirds and, sure. and you know, she, she was like, oh, now if they'll just stick around for a while, it will be awesome. Yeah, I don't need to see. I always like seeing cardinals out in the yard. It always gives me a peaceful feeling. I don't know what it is. And then seeing hawks, like that's always like a good luck sign for me. Oh yeah, yeah. We've got we actually have an owl in our in our in our back backyard that's been showing up uh, over the past few weeks, um, which is good because I hope they'll get rid of some of the squirrels and the uh, chipmunks. Mm. So how do you feel about this? I just opened it. No, you're going to open my door for me. Come out and open the door for me. Or I'm not getting in. No, it, it's cold outside now. You know, cold. Come inside. I'm opening my door, please. It's cold. You're, but you're already standing there now. I was just coming. I See, I turned on the heat. Look, the car seat is, the car seat is warm. I don't care what you turned on. I'm not getting the in the car. car. Is on. I'm not getting in this car until you come and open the door for me. I'm Good a lady. No, I get that, but you're already standing there now. It's not. It's not like I. I, I, I can't. You know, I can't. But you're. You're there. Just do it. Just, just open the damn door. The yeah. Door. Just, just, I don't touch doors. Get out. So oh, don't open door. doors. Open the door for me. I drew, so I, no, drove um, to I would drive off. off. Yeah, I turned on the heater. Everything. You would drive off. You would just leave that poor girl sitting there. Absolutely, that's ridiculous. Is he an Uber driver? <laughs> no, no, he's coming to coming to pick her up on the first date. Oh, on the first date. Well, yeah, yeah, I would leave her there. <laughs> You'd leave her there. I wouldn't want to hang out with somebody like that. Well, and here's here's the thing. I don't think that it's like I warmed the seats for you and everything. I'm sorry. I, I, no, I don't think they're compatible. Here, here's here's why. Obviously, because, because if 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 I would and say say for example, I was still single, and I was coming to pick you up, Danielle, this mm-hmm. is first date. We've only we've only talked on the phone. Be our first date. I come to pick you up. I want to I want to I want to treat you as nice as I possibly can. I'm gonna pull up. I'm gonna get out. I'm gonna open up the door allow you to sit down so that way you don't have to be bothered by it. I want to take total good care of you. Mm -hmm. I would get out, open the door. Now her expecting it is just like, she should have just walked away. Like whenever dudes start acting like this and not be like, open the door for me. Yeah. And then when he tries to open it from the inside. (laughs) Yeah. I've been like, "Mm, no, I'm not doing that. And then just turn around and walked off. Just like, yeah, I don't, I'm not, I'm not doing this. Yeah, it could have went, you know, both ways, I guess you could say. But like for me, oh see, I've never really been on a date before, so I don't I don't know how it all plays out. Well, it it, sh- it shows some respect that that you're that you're there to do more than just, you know, take them out and get a little bit of nooky nooky. You know, that you're actually trying to respect the other person. And the way yeah. that he's dressed for a date, bro. Doesn't mean really? not everything, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, well, like you said, they're just not compatible. That's obvious. Um, yeah. I would have still drove off, though. Well, yeah. <laughs> like, Bye. This is awkward as hell already. Yeah. I don't know. I, I would have walked off. I would have set myself off. up for the rest of the evening with that, you know, I don't know. Well, and uh, yes, 
you do not expect it. He'll get mad if I open it myself. Now, see, I don't get mad if my wife opens the door herself. But, you know, because certain situations, it's just it works out a little bit easier. But if, if I have that opportunity, especially if we're, we're going to going to be going out, if we're just going to like Lowe's to pick up some some crap, then, you know, it's it's pretty much just like, let's just get in the car and go. <laughs> I ain't got time for that. Yeah. You know, but if we're going out on a date, she's 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 taking the time to get all dialed up just just for me. Then you know, I'm going to be opening up that damn door and, and, you know, making sure that, you know, my jacket's going over every puddle that it possibly can, you know, I'm going to, I'm going to treat her like a, an absolute queen. Yeah. But, you know, if we're just, if we're just going to grab burgers or something like that, she's just like, I don't care. <laughs> then I'm yeah. not going to worry about it. And then sometimes I, I mean, these days you should just be thrilled that somebody is, you know, he actually has a vehicle. <laughs> 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 Damn, girl. At least he's got a vehicle. Oh. The date we're going on is me that we pay. You see, I'll we pay and I'll bring you back. So the least you can do is come and sit down. It's almost like I'm he has to beg her to come in there. No. Yeah. I'm not getting in the car. So say he gets <laughs> out, say he gets out and then opens the door for her. It's still gonna be awkward. Yep. You know? Yep. Her oh, expectations yeah. and his well, if she, well, right there, if she said, I'm not going to open the door, he should have just, just drove off at that point. Like, okay, see you later. And then That's what I would have done. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, a woman should be treated like a princess, but never demand. That's a good point. Yeah. Because it doesn't, when you demand oh. that kind of like treatment, it's, uh, it doesn't come natural and it doesn't seem deserving. I don't know. I never have that princess like kind of attitude in life i'm i'm pretty easy going (laughs) nice audio well thank you thank you yeah he should drove off at this point thank you for being a gentleman (laughs) she had to ask him thank you No, I'm ready now. Oh, yeah. Now, you know what? Don't worry. Come on. Are you serious? No, yeah. just come out because I don't, I, I don't think this. No, come, come. Just come out. Are you serious right now? No, yeah. Come. <laughs> I want to show you something. Okay. I want to, I want to show you something. I, you know, I'm very really confused. How I drove to this place, I came to pick you up. You could have met me there. I will also pay for the date. This place we are going, minimum oh, $200. That's completely a different story. Like oh. she, she required him to come pick her up. So it's, it's, it would have been easier for her to meet him there. It's minimum $200. Then she gives attitude right there. Ooh, yeah. I'm, I'm with you on this. Oh. <laughs> Yep, get the F out of the car, girl. That's exactly what Yeah, I'm he's like, you know what? Just get out. <laughs> yeah. Good for yep. him. Yep. Yep. He's, he sounds like he's from Nigeria. It doesn't matter where he's from. So what is he you saying? Know? Minimum 200 that I will spend? Is he saying that's how much he was going to spend on the date? Yeah. That's, that's a lot of minim- money. That's minimum. Minimum that he's going to spend would be 200 bucks. So it's probably like 100 bucks a plate. That doesn't include drinks. You know, this is probably a really nice place. Although, I I doubt it that that that's true because if you're dressed like that, most places are not going to allow you in. This makes me so happy that me and Baker's just going for coffee because I couldn't handle all that. Oh, like yeah. somebody spending that much money on me on a first date, I'd feel extremely uncomfortable. That's just me personally, though. Yeah, I wouldn't. I would not want that. But I absolutely wouldn't expect them because it's like this, like if you're going on a first date, you know, and there's expectations for something later, like you can kind of, for me, I'd be observant, you know, what I like, what I don't like, but I would not demand it from that person because that kind of sets you up for failure, you know? Right. If you, if you're, if you're judging the way that, and that, that is one thing about, you know, a date is you're sort of judging this person. Um, yeah, you're sitting back and watching and, and just enjoying their company for what they are. You and know, also, and, if, and, and, if, and if and if you see something that's like 
scream it out at you, you know, that you're just like, yeah, they, they've got this thing where, you know, they, uh, they, 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 uh, you know, drink too much or, you know, oh. they've got, they, they, they go to the bathroom every five minutes and they come back with a little bit of white powder on their nose. Oh. These little observant things that you're like paying attention to. It's like, their their normal tics and habits and crap like that the way that they 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 treat people or the people around them and you know this this right here man she set off all the red flags for him sure i mean good for her of like saying that she wants to she wants to be treated like a lady and you know he should be a gentleman but this guy is essentially once you put it in, once you put it yeah. into context of of this it's yeah. just like oh like she made, she's, she's gone out of her way to make it difficult on him and they give him attitude whenever he does show up. It's like, that really changes things quite a bit. Why, why is she recording this? Yeah. Is she recording this? That's a good point. Yeah. Yeah. But also uh, it, it, it could be, it could be a stage thing. That I was spent. And I have to beg you to get in the car. It's not oh, like I can't all I was asking is that you just open the door. It's not that I can't open the door. It's just that you're already standing. I opened the door twice. Don't worry. You know, sometimes... Where are you going? Sometimes you're just be avoiding problems. Where are you going? going? I'm, I'm getting in my car. I can, I'm opening my door by myself. <laughs> are you serious? I just wanted you to be, to be a gentleman. No, don't worry. He's like, enjoy the night. Is he freaking serious right now? Good for him. He spent more time than he needed to already. Mm -hmm. Where are you going? In Tesla. We were supposed to be going on a date. Where are you going? No, I'm going home. <laughs> it's not a... Yo, I'm Didn't you drive by here for me? I thought I did, but clearly. I'm, let me just... Let me just respect myself and go home <laughs> you know yeah wow. exactly wow there's some dignity here <laughs> bro kudos on him yeah kudos on him just walking away he made the seat warm for her i think that's sweet enough <laughs> this this is this is pretty awesome so and his car was clean that's a plus too <laughs> yeah this this is this is pretty awesome. So check this out. This little kid is autistic. And he's to, dad tells him don't touch the guard, not too close. Stand right here. Aww. And watch what happens. Guard takes one step over so he can be in the shot with him. To take a picture. Oh, and then dude steps right back where he's supposed to be. Oh, that's like, that's, that's awesome. That's really nice. Yeah. Cause these, these, these guards, they're, they, they have a very specific duty that they have to, they, that they have to do. I mean, he could even get in trouble for doing that. <laughs> it's, it's, it's crazy. Like that's that's why whenever they say you know don't touch those guards, it's so wild. So I saw something. No, I don't want to watch that. That's um, where is? Oh, oh, what time is it? Oh, it's almost it's almost that time. Jeez. Yeah, that equals respect class act. Yeah, that is a class act. That's wonderful. Uh, I love watching Queen's Garden and the Tomb of the Unknown Soldier. Yeah, absolutely beautiful. Like I said, you get in he could get in trouble for that. Just you're, like you're not supposed to to do anything like that. But I don't think they're going to give him a hard time. Uh, nearing, nearing, nearing the Baker time. Oh, it is getting close, isn't it? It is getting close. Let me see if I can find so I can redirect all you guys over that direction. We've got we've got a couple of people that are on today. Have you been watching Baker this week yet? A little bit. 
he's streaming like seven, eight hours at a time. So I'll go back and watch a little bit. Like if I get a chance before bed or whatever, there's nothing else on. Yeah, it's, um, let's see, we've got. Or I'll stop in and say hi, you know. Oh, yeah. Baker, Baker's so damn awesome. Yeah. Let's see what time. What time? So he is starting at nine. Mm-hmm. Starting at nine this morning. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to I'm going to grab his his channel. I'm going to throw it up there, and that's where I'll redirect everybody to as soon as I get this set up. Um, usually I'll send everybody over to the Bose Mo's, um little morning show, and then she'll direct everybody over there. Mm-hmm. But, you know, I I like to spread the love around. You know, of course, because because Baker 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 such good people. I mean, he really yeah. is. And Absolutely, he's, he's done done so much to like grow his channel and grow other mm-hmm. people's channel that you know, I just, I just, I just love the guy. He likes to make everybody happy. He does. And there we go. We got that all set up for everybody's going to be be jumping over to the baker. Also, Mo is streaming, so you're more than welcome to go over and say hi to Mo and show her some love. Um, Mo will be on with me tonight. Um, we are going to be doing the edge comb. We're going to be going to be covering that that portion of it. Um, I think I'm on. I'm still on day one, but I'm near. No, I just finished day one, so we'll be moving on to day two. And of course, we'll have some guests that come in. Um, you're more than welcome to swing by, Danielle. Um, mm-hmm. We've got we've got some really really cool stuff going on with this. Hey, expert, yes, Baker is the happy ender. Is the happy ender. <laughs> well, state state rested after a couple witnesses, I should say. Yeah, but man, did you see? Did you see the video of of? of the the incident that happened no so i saw the video of the incident dude was being being like jumped what is this one what is it the 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 stabulation in the in the uh in the water um yeah no i keep on wondering what's going on (laughs) like i've only seen like bits and pieces no i didn't see that i didn't see it well i'll show it to you in private i won't show it up here on on online okay yeah i want to see it it's a little gruesome, but I will, uh, you guys go check out Baker. Tell him, tell him, tell him hi, make sure you hit the thumbs up on your way out and on your way in, because that's what we do. You all have a wonderful, wonderful day and we will see you tonight. Peace y'all. Bye. Now I got to call somebody to come get me because my car to turn into a spaceship and I don't know how to fly it. Not an astronaut.